have you ever built lwc component so even if you can't now you will be able to build ui rich components just using omni studio so the problem with lwc component is that you need to manage three or four files i think so html css javascript and even meta file so even to write a very simpler task like passing the data from the ui to the apex itself you have to write a lot more coding right so you have to create an input you have to manage it with javascript and you have to push it to the apex controller and even after that the ui if you want to build a very good ui still building it in lwc is quite difficult to build a good ui so that's where this omni studio comes into the picture if you want to build an lwc component without writing the code without writing the code and even to build a very ui rich components you can do it using omni studio itself so omni studio is simply used to build an lwc component which is ui rich but without the code so there are three important layers within omni studio first is that digital experience second is service management and third is developer experience now basically this digital experience is used in order to build uis if you want to build a ui in that cases you use the digital experience layer on the other hand if you want to do, do the database interactions you use service management layer and if you want to do the deployment like moving your uh, omni studio from one uh, salesforce environment to another you use the developer experience let's understand each of this uh, by a real time example so for an example let's say if i go to this amazon website right as you can see there is an amazon website right now so using the digital experience you can build the ui like where is the logo and where is the search box and everything like that you can build the same thing using this digital experience layer which will be used to build the ui on the other hand let's say if i want to order something like this showcase cover or or this kind of things right so if i want to book something if i click over it and i add it to the card and if i make the like for an example order so what's basically it's going to do is it's going to update the same thing within amazon database and i'm going to get my pr particular product so basically what's happening over here is that that system or we can say we can use this service management layer so that we can do the database interaction so whenever i'm going to make an order that order is going to get created inside say uh, amazon's uh, database and then based on that i'm going to get my order so basically if you see over here there's a database interaction in this case now the third layer is the developer experience or we can say uh, whenever you want to do the deployment let's say this is amazon.com amazon.com is a production kind of a system right it's lively used by the customer but developer might code somewhere else amazon.com might have its developer org as well where they are trying out new functionalities coding and doing all the stuff and then they are pushing into the amazon.com that is a live production website so that deployments can be done using the developer experience let's segregate this each of this layer one by one so within the digital experience layer there are two important things flex cards and omni scripts let's understand what each of this is and when do we use each of them so let's talk about omni script first so now whenever you want to build a guided path that's where you use omni script let's take an example let's say you want to sell something on amazon if you want to sell something on amazon you need to create a seller account and the seller account will have such kind of a guided path like step number 1 step number 2 3 4 which will ask you specific details so that it can register you like your name phone number gst number and all those details right it's going to take the details on the base of the guided path right 1 2 3 you can see the steps so if you want to build such kind of gui <coughs> guided path inside the salesforce or omni studio you can do that using omni scripts on the other hand if you just want to build a stand alone ui right for an example as you can see this is a page and this page has add to cart uh, add to cart icon and uh, we have sign in option and we have a logo at the left side and there are categories arranged over here so this is a ui rich website and if you want to build a stand alone ui in that cases you can use flex cards so these are two important things omni script to build the guided path and flex card is used to build a st stand alone ui let's move on to the second layer that is called as a service management layer 
So as I already told you, this service management layer is specifically used to do the interaction with the database. Whatever changes I'm going to do inside the UI, same will get updated inside the database using this service management layer. What do I mean by that is first of all, there are two important things that we need to look into. First is the data mappers and second is nothing but the integration procedures. <coughs> so what exactly this data mappers is? Whenever, let's say there is a create account page and when you fill up all the details and if you click on the submit button, let's say there is a submit button over here. If you click over here, automatically what happens is a records get created inside the Amazon. So what's actually happening over here is UI is interacting with the database. And that kind of interaction can be built using data mappers. There can be data extract, data turbo extract and all those things. But that's what the data mappers is used for. At the same time, if you want to fetch the data from Amazon and to you want to show whatever packages or whatever orders that are going to come today, you need to fetch the details from Amazon where you have to again do the interaction with the database of Amazon, right? So in that case is again here data mappers comes into the picture as you are going to do the interaction with the database. Now in both the examples to create a record, I had to make a sample one, one request to the database to the uh, database of the Amazon. I have to send a separate request to create a record and a separate request <coughs> to fetch the data from the database from of the Amazon. So in order to do a small operations, I had to do two requests. I want to do two requests I had made to create and to fetch. And if you think about it, if there are multiple requests like this, it's going to create a too much load on Amazon website or Amazon web services or Amazon database. So in order to fix this issue, one way is to do that is that we can send all the requests together in one go itself rather than doing two separate requests. We can just send one request and we can fetch and create the data at the same time. To do that, we use integration procedure. So again, integration procedure is also used in order to do the interaction with the database. So integration procedure use combination of data mappers and uh, we can say integrate, uh, like if you want to do some kind of integration, if you want to pull data from external system, you want to create a record, you want to fetch a record, but within a single transaction itself, in that case, you can use integration procedure. So as you can see, I'm creating an account and I'm fetching the record at the same time with the simple one call out. Without doing multiple callouts, I can fetch and create the record with one single transaction so that the load on the system is less. So this is what the integration procedure is. So basically data mappers are used to do the interaction with the database. On the other hand, this integration procedures are used to do interaction with the database, but with a single transaction itself. Now the last thing that I want to talk about is the developer experience. That is the third layer. Now, whenever you want to move your data or whenever you want to move your Omni scripts or Omni studio from your Salesforce org one to Salesforce org two, in that cases, we use developer experience. In the next upcoming videos, we are going to talk much more deeper on each of the layer and each of these things one by one. If you found this video helpful, I request you to please like this video and subscribe to my channel.